Welcome everybody and gather around. Today I am answering the most frequently asked question ever. Are sulfates bad for your hairs? Should you be using sulfates? This is a great question that I'm going to answer today. Now I know coming into this video, you are one of three people. I do not need to use sulfates. You don't know what you're talking about. I know everything and they are bad for you. That's that. What the f is a sulfate? Mel, I don't even know what you're talking about, but I'm here for you, girl. I'm your number one fan, I love you. Now there is a lot of information out there on the interwebs that nobody likes to read. So I have read them and I've narrowed down the facts for all of you. So listen up and stay tuned to this video if you really want to find out what these sulfates, this ingredient that is very commonly found in our shampoos, is really doing to our hair. Intro! Mel! 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 Mel with the double L. Mel with the double L. Here's what you need to know based on the nitty gritty, scientific, actual facts! The main thing you need to gather from this whole video is that sure, Sulfates can be damaging to your hair. Yeah, but they can also have great benefits on your hair and scalp. Now I know there are many of my followers on here watching that follow the curly girl method. You're probably thinking that I'm talking nonsense right now. This is against everything you believe in. All sulfates are bad, bad, bad. You can't use sulfates. But I'm gonna explain to you now why you need to. The reason why we can't consistently be using these co-washes that don't contain any sulfates is that they're not really doing any cleansing. They cannot properly clean the sebum, sebum, sweat, and dirt from your hair and scalp. So over time, this will cause major buildup. Build up. It's gonna build up. Especially when you're using a lot of products. Now I know what it's like, you don't want to waste products, but you don't want to leave all that product in your hair. Here is why. The buildup on the scalp will lead to a lot of itchiness, you'll get a lot of flakes, and over time this can lead to hair loss because you're clogging the pores of your scalp with not just product, but sebum and dirt and nastiness. Your hair is gonna feel gross, it's gonna look gross when you're styling it, and you will be wasting any new product that you're using because it can't be properly absorbed into your hairs. Got that? How do we prevent that from happening? With sulfates! So before anything, let's first talk about really what sulfates are. Like really? I'm gonna bring on Scientific Mel. She's gonna get into the different types of sulfates that we find in our ingredients. And I'll be back later. Oh, it's my turn. Okay, okay everybody. Let's start with shampoo. So, a shampoo is technically designed to clean the scalp of sebum, sweat components, despoquatic stratum corneum, styling products, environmental dirt, and prevent the development of colitis and support dermatitis. Have you ever wondered why there are different shampoos for different hair types and needs? Uh, yeah. Do you think these are just a gimmick? They definitely are not! Yes, thank you, Voice of Reason. There are actually different types of sulfates. There are five different categories of shampoo detergents. We have the anionics, cationics, and amphoterics, 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 non-ionics, and natural surfactants. But today I'll be overviewing the most common surfactants that you will find in your daily shampoos. Let us begin with the anionic detergents. Anionic detergents are the most common detergents found in your shampoos in today's market. Most shampoos are designed to create good hair cleansing using laurel sulfate. Laurel sulfate will be the second or third ingredient listed on your shampoo list after water. <clears throat> Sorry, I was really sounding like a 
for a while. <clears throat> so, these ingredients are very popular primary cleansers in your shampoos. Why? Well, they work really well in hard and soft water. They produce a rich foam, which we always associate with good cleansing, and they are easily rinsed out of the hair. To say the least, they are excellent cleansers. But, they can be hard on the hair. These laurel sulfates are commonly used in oily hair shampoos. So for the oily hair people, look for these ingredients in your shampoos as you're going to get the most effective cleanse from your cleanser. We also have lauryl sulfates. So lauryl sulfates are one of the most commonly used shampoo ingredients for normal to dry hair. They will give you excellent cleansing and leave your hair in great condition, like some of these. Now hold on, because I have even more great examples for drying curly hair. This will lead us into the next category, with non-ionic detergents. These are the second most popular detergents found in your shampoos. Here are some wonderful examples that you may also find in your shampoo bottle ingredients. The next type is anphoteric detergents. The term anphoteric refers to substances that have both negative and positive ionic charges. Anphoteric detergents are also used in shampoos that are made for fine hair and chemically treated hair because they foam moderately well and they leave the hair more manageable. Mel, I don't even know what you're talking about, but I'm here for you. I'm, I'm your number one fan. I love you. And the last type of surfactants that you will find in your shampoo ingredients are natural detergents. Many of you may not know this. There are natural based surfactants and sulfates that come from plants. Now these natural saponics have excellent lathering capabilities. Well, yes, whatever. However, they're actually poor cleansers and therefore they have to be used at a very high concentration, making these products also very expensive. So really, when you're using a botanical-based hair care, it's the synthetic detergents that are providing most of the cleansing, whereas the natural ingredients are really just for the natural reasons. Thank you, Scientist Mel, for the mumbo jumbo. Let's just hope we didn't put people to sleep. So I guess the question now is, what does a healthy sulfate routine look like? What is the excessive use that is bad for your hair? Oh, okay. For me, I only shampoo once a week. Now if there's a time throughout the week when I need to refresh and I need to wash my hair again, I won't do a full sulfate shampoo. What I will do is use a non-sulfate co-wash. That way I'm not extra cleansing. But that works for me because I don't have oily hair. My hair is naturally dry, it's also chemically treated, and I don't really sweat much, so it's not like I need to be cleansing much out of my hair more than once a week. So possibly during a midweek refresh, I will use a mild co-wash so that I don't overdo it with my hair. But hold up, because if your hair is oilier and you do sweat a lot, you should be washing your hair more than once a week with a sulfate-based shampoo so that you don't get that buildup. So maybe if you fall into that category, you should be washing your hair at least twice a week and in between that, co-washing if needed. The reason I created this video for you guys today was so that you become educated, of course, entertained, and just to break the fear that you have of using sulfates on your hair because they are certainly not all bad for you. And if you didn't already know, I'm actually a professional hairstylist, so I've seen all these effects before my own eyes. Take it from me, a girl that washes their hair with sulfates once a week. So if you're wondering what I use on my hair, I will list all of my favorite shampoos in the description below. I'm also gonna cite where I got my information from today because it was not from here. And to close off this video, I'm gonna shout out our positive comments of the week. Thank you, Annie Adams. And we have Lizzie Joner who's asking about sulfates and silicones. And guess what? I hope today's video answered your questions about sulfates. And guys, I know you have questions about silicones. Stay tuned for next week, and I'm gonna break that myth. Or will I? Until next time, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to Mains by Mel.
Well, whatever! Mel, please reply, I love you! <laughs> because they fall moderately well, moderately, because they fall moderately well and leave the hell. Moderately, Musa. Because they foam moderately well and they leave the hair more manageable. Moderately. 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 Oh my god. <laughs> the fuck is moderately? I don't know. It's get inside. See you in here with me.